So much happened yesterday. I, I don't even really know where to start. It's it's hard to wrap your brain around all the different twists and turns that took place yesterday. We have uh, the CMA sp responses that were published. There's a ton of Xbox news. Sony is saying uh, Xbox will actively make Call of Duty worse. Let's dive into all of it right now. Okay, so first things first, let's start with the, the Starfield news because that got a lot of people riled up. Basically, uh, Starfield announced a new release date of September 6, 2023. And you can see down there the Starfield Direct is going to be on June 11th, 2023. Uh, spoiler warning, the trailer is pretty cool. They show some really interesting stuff. If you have any uh, frame rate counters out there like me, you can see that. The in-studio shots where they do off-screen were shot at 24 frames per second. So, you know, you can see some uh, lag issues and such in the asset. I don't know why it's playing weird now. But yeah, the uh, the gameplay is looking pretty good. Like, I, I like how they showcased it this time. Very excited about Starfield. But a lot of people were concerned about the release date. Look, I, I get it. We thought it would come out in the first half of uh, 2023, and that's a bummer. But at the end of the day, I mean, I just want the game to be as good as it possibly can be. The The thing that this does bring up, though, is it brings into question Xbox's ability to stick to a release date. When Xbox makes a presentation, it's kind of getting to the point where, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it with these games, you know. Uh, and I, I believe they've actually criticized Sony for doing the same thing in the past, and now they're they themselves are finding themselves guilty of it because Starfield was supposed to be last year. Now it's end of this year and uh, they just keep kind of pushing it down the road, right? Glad we have a release date. It's it, it's not just, it's sort of a gray area, right? I'm glad we have a release date. I'm very happy the developers have appropriate time to make the game better because, you know, you've seen me talk about my frame rate concerns with the game and the frame rate's looking much better. It's at least above 30 frames per second, which is, you know, playable. I'm hoping for closer to locked 60 and a, a well-optimized Starfield experience, but a lot of conversations around that one. The next story, oh man, where do we go from here? Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, there's a lot of different ways we can do it. The one I thought was the most spicy was from Lulu here. Lulu said, Microsoft offered Sony the dominant console leader for well over a decade with 80% market share, a 10-year agreement on far better terms than Sony would ever get from us. We've also offered Sony guaranteed long-term access to Call of Duty, but they keep refusing. Why? Yeah, and Tom Warren is referencing the story where uh, Sony has suggested to the CMA that Microsoft could release a buggy version of Call of Duty on PlayStation, which could make gamers lose confidence in PlayStation as a go-to venue for Call of Duty. Microsoft has no incentive to make games worse on other platforms. There's there's not a reason they would do that. They're going to make like $1.5 billion a year from PlayStation gamers. Why would they negatively impact the product? There's there's not a lot of logic to that sense. So so Lulu said what you said here. It's like, uh, Sony keeps refusing the deal. Why? The CEO of SIE answered that question in Brussels. In his words, I don't want a new Call of Duty deal. I just want to block your merger. And there we have it in black and white quoted from Lulu Chang Maservi. I'm very surprised that she would quote him directly. I believe she's referencing Jim Ryan. And she even has a date of this occurring and continue to respond to people. When did Jim say that? February 21st. So we, we've we confirmed now that it's Jim Ryan and we confirmed the date now. I have so much respect for you, Lulu, being upfront about things that she sent somebody rose. But anyway, lots of responses. Uh, Lulu Ching Maservi has been very upfront with her stance on the whole issue. And it's, it's pretty shocking that Jim Ryan just outright said it. Oh yeah, I don't care about the Call of Duty deal. I just want to block the merger. And that's what I've sort of suspected from the beginning. I think that's how they're playing it. And I don't think that's going to play very well for them when the CMA thing happens behind closed doors. I believe for Microsoft it happened last week, but there's going to be ongoing conversations. And hopefully we learn more in the coming days. Let's head over to Video Games Chronicle 24-7 to see more. But before we go over there, 
Half of you aren't subscribed. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell if you like this content to help the channel grow. I, I stopped the promos, but you know what? There's just something about them that I really enjoyed. So I'll do them, but they're going to be a lot shorter now. So yeah, I hope I hope you won't give me too much of a hard time in the comments. Anyway, Sony, cl Sony claims Microsoft could release buggy Call of Duty games for PlayStation consoles. Again, I do think this is absolutely ridiculous. It tells UK Watchdog that the Activision misery should be blocked or Call of Duty divested. Of course they want it divested. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't think there's any... Like, that would be so disruptive to the production process within Activision Blizzard, I have to imagine, ripping out one of their assets. And then what does that do to the mobile strategy for Microsoft? Microsoft has made it very clear. They have no interest in divesting. So, of course, Sony's going to be like, well, we think you should definitely make them divest. And I think... Um, they just let it go through and go from there. Here's what the VG wrote up about it. And I'm going to go over the documents in more detail myself. In the newly published response to these findings, Sony said Microsoft's bid to acquire Activision should be blocked or subject to structural remedies if it is to be approved. It said behavioral remedies would be insufficient to address the regulator's concerns because there were myriad ways Microsoft could withhold or degrade access which would be extremely difficult to monitor and police. It argued if Microsoft failed to comply with its commitment, it would likely only risk paying a fine, possibly many years later, but rivals access to Call of Duty would be immediately foreclosed, irreparably damaging their ability to compete and ultimately harming consumers. You know what's gonna be really harming to consumers? When the CMA blocks the deal in their territories, and Microsoft takes them to court for, for what, three years, they still buy Activision Blizzard basically everywhere else. And then, um, and then what? Just those people just don't get Call of Duty on Game Pass. Like the game's not going to change in those, those areas. I believe it'll still be released. So you're just gonna get absolutely hosed if you're in the areas that the CMA regulates, especially when we know that the EU is likely going to go through. And there's no way that the, the FTC doesn't accept some some remedies that are presented by Microsoft. We'll see what happens with the CMA, but I, I think this is going to be very bad for them uh, at the end of the day. Uh, so they're saying that basically it would hurt them, right? One of the ways Microsoft could choose to circumvent its obligations would be to release buggy Call of Duty games for PlayStation, Sony claimed, swiftly detecting any diversions from and ensuring compliance with a commitment as to technical or graphical quality would be challenging, it said. For example, Microsoft might release a PlayStation version of Call of Duty where bugs and errors emerge only on the game's final level or after later updates. Even if such degradations could be swiftly detected, any remedy would likely come too late, by which time the gaming community would have lost confidence in PlayStation as a go-to venue for Call of Duty. Have you played Call of Duty PlayStation? Because guess what? Often, that game already has a ton of bugs in it on all platforms, and there's a ton of hacking issues, and things like that are going to crop up. That's a very easy, what's it called, uh, scapegoat, straw man for Sony to present to the court because literally any bug could arise, and they could be like, see, they made it worse on PlayStation. And Activision's still going to be making the games. Place, or Xbox still wants the 1.5 billion dollars from you every year that does not make sense so that's sort of my reaction to it and and it continues quoting the thing here let's just finish it off it added even if microsoft operated in good faith it would be incentivized to support and prioritize development on the xbox version of the game such as by using its best engineers and more of its resources there would be no practical way for the cma or sie to monitor how microsoft chooses to allocate its resources and the quality slash quantity of engineers it devotes to the playstation version of call of duty to ensure that sie would be treated fairly and equally so that's the long in this that's the drama that came from yesterday. And there's still a whole bunch of documents to go through. I have several more tabs open, just of many news stories that happened from yesterday. But 
Sony's saying they're going to make Call of Duty worse, and Starfield was delayed. Those were the two biggest headlines, I believe, from yesterday that I wanted to do a video about today. And uh, if I can get squeeze out some time again to make another one, I'll probably have another one for tomorrow, but it's been pretty busy with the kiddos. So thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to know my content goes live. Thank you so much to everybody for watching. Uh, members, there is an exclusive interview for you for a few more days with Michael Pactor. It's an hour-long interview. You can expect that on the main channel soon. But if you want to watch it a few days early, you just click that join button right down there. You can watch the full 55 minute long interview, which will uh, come to everybody else soon. I can also link to it right here so you can check it out. I'm going to get out of here and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.